Hey guys, it's Corbett Lunsford from the Building Performance Workshop. We're working outside today because I still live and work out of the tiny lab, which is the world's most high performance tiny house on wheels, but it is not as roomy as we need for what we're about to do today. Today we have kind of a cool test. Uh, we have a new client that has challenged us with a strange job, which is the only kind that I enjoy nowadays. Uh, Vencor Inc. Uh, does what's called stellar engraving, and they are making what you can see here, which are HVAC return registers that are very beautiful. They're engraved out of wood. They are the only company that I'm aware of that has wondered to themselves how much air actually comes through my wood uh, return registers. You see wood registers on supply grills sometimes, and you see them uh, out in the field. Generally, they're not moving very much air, and it's because something like this as a design will probably admit less air through the holes than this one will because there's literally more wood in the way. So this company has actual engineers who ask themselves, I wonder what's happening with these actual grills, which is the right question to ask. Um, so I'm very happy to be testing these today. What we have for the setup is a number of these different designs. <clears throat> We have our box, which I'll explain in a minute. We have our calibrated scientific fan. This is the blower door, it's the Retrotech 1000. This fan is not just going to induce an airflow, which is important for testing uh, airflows and pressures, but also it's gonna be able to measure exactly how much air I am moving. And that is important because if I was to just plug these into any old residential HVAC system, then I wouldn't know how much air was moving through the system in the first place. All I would be testing is the back pressure or the pressure drop that these will introduce. So measuring the resistance is important, but also we're gonna go ahead and measure the airflow through them. When we put them onto the system, how much does that affect the fan? So this fan is very important. Now the box that I have manufactured is a cardboard box. What it's gonna do is emulate a return plenum, the duct that is between this register and probably the filter that would be in there too, which we're not gonna simulate today, and the fan, which will be on the other side of this. Now this box uh, looks good. It's got this blue tape from Thermal Star, uh, which is an air sealing tape that we use for duct sealing, but just because it looks good doesn't mean it is good. So the first step in today's work is we're gonna test the air tightness of this box because that is the most important baseline step. Okay, a little while later, a little bit dirtier, but I have it set up as sexy as is possible when you're running home performance testing out of the back of a pickup truck. So uh, what we have is the box. You can see it's huge. It actually, I found it could not fit inside my house. Um, it's too big. So there's this, in through the front door, I mean. There is this, it's all taped up. It's taped up with air sealing tape, air sealing for testing, because if you seal this thing up with tape that you would use for permanently air sealing something, which you can see lots of examples of in the build of the tiny lab, uh, you would never get it back off. And the point is I'm gonna have to take this back apart because I need to get this grill back off. So one of the grills is in place, totally sealed up, because the first thing we're gonna do is see if my box is actually appropriate to pretend to be a duct system. Uh, all duct systems nowadays have to be airtight. That is a good thing because anybody who says a duct system can leak is not paying attention to things. Air is what is the plumbing of ducts. Sorry. Ducts are plumbing for air. And if you think that it's okay for it to leak out all over the place, that's totally insane. All duct systems should be tight. So tight. Uh, we have some air testing equipment, which I'm going to get into in a minute here. I'm not going to talk about that right now, but around on the other side of this, you can see, first of all, we have our test port. You could call it a hole. It's a test port. That's the sexy term for it. This is a static pressure probe. One of the things we're going to be measuring is a pressure drop that this uh, grill is going to introduce. And I have the static pressure probe in there. Very important that this particular piece of equipment is there. And here we have our blower door. Now, the blower door is set up right now with the absolute smallest rings possible. That means on the 1000 model, I have all the plugs in place. And the only things that are open are those four tiny little holes in the middle. Uh, I am monitoring the static pressure on channel A. And on channel B, we're going to be measuring the flow through the fan. What I want to see is when I put this duct system under 25 pascals or one tenth of an inch of water column, I want to see no leakage at all. So let's go ahead and run this real quick. I'm going to set my speed to 5%. And you can see here, 
We spiked way up above 25 pascals. It's working its way back down. By the way, I knew it was 5% because I tested it beforehand. Oh, 4% got a little bit better. Okay, so I'm at 4%, 25 pascals-ish. And you can see there is nothing happening on the airflow side. There's basically no air coming in and out of this thing right now with it all taped up. That's good. Now we can move forward with the actual test of these return grills. We think that a storm might be coming, so we're gonna try and push through this. This is one of the hazards of working outside. By the way, another hazard of working outside in my current life is that I got punched in the face yesterday with a chainsaw by myself. So isn't my life cool? <laughs> My wife does not like that story. But uh, I wanted to share with you, before we get into the nitty gritty details on how we're going to test this, I do not have a master's degree in diagnostics. There is no such thing as that, probably. Um, I did not go to school for this. College, I mean. I studied for a couple week long courses and then I bought equipment and I kept testing and testing. No one has ever shown me how to do this test. This is the first time that I'm ever doing this. Um, it makes perfect sense to me because I use testing all the time. And so, of course, if you do this and this and this and this, that should emulate exactly what's going on in real life. Uh, by the way, if you have suggestions on how to do this test better in the future, feel free to go ahead and comment below under this video. But I just wanna encourage you, if you have equipment, think outside the box. Everyone else is thinking inside their box. And their box is generally something like BPI or HERS Raiders things like that. So please do think inside those boxes for a while. It will help you. I did. But now I think outside the box all the time and that's where I'm most comfortable and happy because I know that somebody who's an industrial hygienist is not the best person for your client to consult on a home odor issue. Don't even bother trying to send them up the chain. You are at the top of the ladder if you have this equipment in homes. So here's the nitty gritty. First of all, we have this equipment in my hand. Um, this is the Dwyer uh, air quality test kit. It's awesome. It's all Bluetooth. I'm going to describe what I do with this and I'm going to show you in a minute. But the fan is now set up. I'm monitoring static pressure on channel A in inches of water column. And we're monitoring flow on channel B. Now I have opened up all of the plugs on the C ring of my Retrotech 1000. I'm going to go ahead and set my speed to 93%. And you can see what will happen is that we run what is essentially a four ton air conditioner. We get about 1600 CFM. So when we're at 1600 CFM, and it'll start to back off hopefully a little bit, uh, I might have to turn this down one to 92%, but we wanna try and hit that as on the money as possible so that we are hitting an actual 1600 CFM. That's 400 CFM per ton. So what we're gonna do is test these grills at three different stations. I'm testing them for a two-ton system, a three-ton system, and a four-ton system. That's 800 CFM, 1200 CFM, 1600 CFM. We're starting at 1600. Now I'm going to get it down to 91%. We're going to end up right around 1600. What I want to see is, first of all, how much static pressure buildup is inside my box. The box itself is creating 0.04 inches of water column of resistance. And we've got about 16... 1620 we're going to call that number on B. Now I'm going to go ahead and move you through this because we could spend all day trying to dial in exactly which is what I will do for my clients in two seconds here once I'm done showing you. But once I get that to say 1600 what I want to do is take my grill and put it in place. Now I'm using my blower door as a suction device just like an air handler would be. And so come back over here and let me show you this. Right now, let me trade places with you. Right now, we are up to 0.11 inches of water column. That's an addition of about 0.07 inches of water column for that grill itself. Not a filter, but just the grill. And we've cut about 50 CFM from our flow. So now we know what that thing is doing. Now, the third thing that we haven't figured out is how fast the air is having to move through this grill in order to meet that uh, flow. So obviously we only have this much free space and I'm going to go ahead and take a, a sample measurement across this entire grill and we're averaging somewhere without taking an actual sample just for the speed of this uh, video, around 850 
feet per minute. That's pretty fast for a return register. Generally, you want them to be a little bit slower so you don't make a hissing sound because no matter how much duct there is between this thing and the fan, if it's moving that fast, you may hear it a lot more. So we would want several of these things in place around the house, not just one for this size of an air conditioner, a four ton air conditioner. So now you can see how you can start to do all kinds of crazy stuff with the equipment that you have, your blower doors, your air quality testing equipment. Think outside the box, learn to do weird stuff for your clients because there are all kinds of people out there who are looking for people who can tell them how the universe actually works. That's what basically every specialty is. So thank you very much for watching. Please do comment below if you liked this, subscribe to the channel, check out our uh, general website, Building Performance Workshop, all kinds of training videos and things like that inside of that website. I hope that you tune in next time.